and welcome to a very special interview with a local artist. I'm Rosie from the Scott County Public Library and this is Duana Hurd and we are so excited to have her and her art here at the Scott County Public Library for a very special gallery exhibit. It is called Lens, Lines and Lineage and the gallery opening for this exhibit is Friday, June 10th at 5 p.m. here in our gallery. And today we're gonna to have a little chit chat together to learn more about Ms. Hurt. And I'm so excited to hear all about you. So first of all, why don't you um, tell me a little bit about what kind of art do you do? Well, I do mostly assemblages, which is where you take different objects. And I use a lot of found objects, discarded things, things I pick up at a thrift store and put it together. And sometimes it looks like something you would recognize and sometimes it's just whatever it goes together. And I make collages, which collage means to paste onto, and so I'll do a painting and add different things to it. I like altered books. This is when I, I buy a book here for a quarter for the library, and I bought a book about uh, a ghost in Georgetown, and I made it into a book about bees. And I painted on the pages and pasted things on it and cut them up and did all kinds so of things amazing. and changed it into a different kind of book. And that's a, an exciting and fun thing that anybody can do. Right. Uh, I also had classes in Raku uh, uh, Clay Arts uh, here in Georgetown when we had it. So I have a number of things. I love to do that. And I like to paint different kinds of furniture with designs. That is awesome. So actually you use lots of medium. Yes, I just do. one medium, right? So now, are you originally from Georgetown, or do you hail from somewhere else? Or? No, I grew up in Cincinnati, but I came to Georgetown College, and uh, I became a teacher at Scott County High School, oh, wow. and I lived on a, a farm uh, in Owen County, and uh, my husband and I restored a 200-year-old log house oh, that's while I lived there. <laughs> and, and found all kinds of interesting things there, and then I moved back into town, and I live in Georgetown now. So, now did you always do dabble in all these kinds of artistic endeavors from, from your childhood or was it something that you grew into as you? Well, I, you know, I was always interested in art, but these, these particular kinds of things really weren't known to children <laughs> when I was growing up. I like to draw, I love nature, and I like to draw flowers, and I like to draw fossils, and, I, and all leaves and different things. And I took art lessons at the Cincinnati Art Museum uh, that was in the summer for children that the art teachers selected to go. And so that was a really neat experience. And I loved the art museum. I got exposed to all kinds of artists and all kinds of art there. Uh, but no, I, I used art a lot in my teaching. I taught biology and chemistry and I'm a yeah. field naturalist. And so I take children out into the woods and I taught at the graduate school at Georgetown College, teaching by using art, music, literature, and, and um, art, music, literature, and dancing, and all kinds of things. Oh, wow. so, uh, so I used art a lot in my classrooms and had my students uh, make fantastic periodic tables using their own <laughs> Uh, themes like it sometimes we had basketball court periodic tables and we've had the elements on the thing in the in the grandstands or the, in the basketballs so because children really so many children cannot as be as successful if they don't have some other kind of, of assessment besides tests and some children are very gifted and very talented and if they do art or they wrote a song or they they made up a dance then that was the way for them to show and have success in they a really chemistry class when the, when the equations were really kind of hard <laughs> for them. So uh, dealing with Cincinnati Art Museums, is there a piece of art in a museum that really inspires you or means something you know, to you? The first thing that, the first thing that inspired me in, in, uh, with color was um, Darin, who is a, a, a fauve. And I noticed as a child that he that the grass was red and the and the the trees were purple and the 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 uh, creek was yellow you know and I thought you don't always have to paint things and write things and color things and the color that your teacher says is the color that they are you can do something different <laughs> and that inspired me because it was it, and the other thing that inspired me is nature when I was a brownie in second grade I went on a hike. <laughs> 
in, uh, in the woods in Cincinnati and I saw a Dutchman breeches and I had never seen a wildflower before. And I was just amazed that the creator made something that looked like pants on the clothesline. <laughs> it turned out to be a flower. And so I, I it, it said, there, in my mind it says, there's so much out there I don't know about nature. And so I got my little golden guides and I was a little rock hound and a little <laughs> collector of all kinds of things, much to my mother's dismay. <laughs> Well, do you have an artist bucket list that you'd like to share? Yes, I do. <laughs> My bucket list is I would love to be present when Andy Goldsworthy or John Foreman made land art. You know, they, they take rocks and sticks and stones and flowers and they make these beautiful designs with them, geometric designs, some sort of like mandalas. Uh, and they only last for a little while. I saw a thing on John Foreman just the other day, and he makes his on the beaches in Wales. And the rocks there are like purple and red and yellow. Naturally, he doesn't, he doesn't paint them. And he made these incredible designs. Yeah. And then, then the tide comes and takes it away. So it only lives Very for maybe ethereal. a few ethereal. hours. They take a photograph of it. And I would love to see that happen. I, I did that with my children on, our, on some of our field trips we would make a little mini one with petals and leaves and flowers and sticks right, right. and we would spell the names of things with sticks but I would just love to be present at one of those now Andy Goldsworthy's in Scotland so I need to go to Wales and Scotland so <laughs> that more bucket list yes yes bucket list. <laughs> we'll travel all right so is there anything that is a challenge that you might want to take on with your art in the future? Are you, are you thinking about something new or something you want to challenge yourself with? Well, I, I, during COVID, I, I found a new challenge. Is I was part of a group called Coming of Age. It's a grant from the Kentucky Foundation for Women. And um, it was for women over 60, and it was writing. And so I wrote about things and then I wanted to do art to go along How with wonderful. the writing. And we wrote poetry. I wrote a children's book and, and I'm working on a novel. And, and, and it, the feedback, Dr. Jones, from who's a professor emeritus from Berea College, uh, uh, was one of our grant writers. But and we were stuck in the house and Zoom came. <laughs> And, open the new world. And, and here we were meeting and talking to each other and listening to each other's work and giving each other feedback about art and many of the women in this did art also as well as writing and it was just a great opportunity uh, so I, I see doing that and then I do art um, for different causes that I support one is the Kentuckians for the Commonwealth and I donate try to donate at least two or three pieces every year for them. Oh, so uh, I, I always try to come up with themes that relate to something timely so some people will want to buy what I'm <laughs> and they give money to those causes. So. Well tell us a little bit about the lens lines and lineage pieces that you are going to be sharing with the patrons in our gallery. Well I, I have a variety of pieces I chose. You know most of my work has been donated or given as gifts or when we had an art center here, it was sold at the art center. So the work I have here is work that's in my own home. And so there are pieces that are really personal, personal pieces, pieces yeah. that I didn't want to, to sell. And um, they're all different kinds of things. I have one that's uh, a fresco on plaster uh, of the Earth Mother uh, as the epitome of many of the Earth Mothers throughout history from many different cultures. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have... Um, one that is uh, for my family, and this is where the lineages come in. I like to do art that relates to my family. I've, I'm the fam I'm the oldest of six children, so I'm the family archivist. Mm -hmm. I have I wrote my grandmother's story. I copied her story down. I wrote my dad's story. I wrote my mother's story, and they've all passed. And we now have that things. And then my father's family, I've collected stories from that family as well. So the art really is so, part of your lineage. And, and, my, yeah. and, and writing down my story since I'm the oldest, but I told my siblings, I left home when my baby sister was a toddler. 
you know, so I said, there's a whole family story that I don't know that they need to continue some, and add to it. So yeah, we have uh, some work to inspire in other families. So I, I have a, a one here that's an homage to my uh, my family reunion, which is actually this weekend, mm -hmm. the 98th Gilbert family reunion at the Mountain Laurel Festival in Pineville, Kentucky. <laughs> and, um, and it's a picture of my grandparents, uh, all the ladies dressed up in their beautiful hats and their gloves and their heels at oh, the wow. cemetery. Of course, now we wear jeans and everything else. <laughs> but I thought these women, you know, they dressed up. They got their kids' Sunday best. They had the food on the table that they made. And, and here they look so calm and cool and collected in this picture with their big hats on, which I love hats. I, I, have, I have a hat collection, too. But anyway, that's one of the pieces. Uh, I then meant some of them ones about nature. I have a, an angel that's from the bur oak tree at Faith Baptist Church that we had to cut down on older. It, oh it was diseased and was going to fall on the church. But uh, that inspired me. And then I have things that are... Uh, a very serious. I have one that's a totemic tale of a little girl that had to keep a secret. And as you look at her, she's three dimensional and she's like five feet tall. So she's a big little girl. <laughs> and uh, and you can look at all the different parts on there to see what the, what happened to her. Um, Wonderful. And I have uh, then the altered book about bees. So that that I'm be very excited to see that. I'm a very big fan of altered books. So. <laughs> We are so thankful that you are willing to do this and share this very personal art with us and all of our patrons. And I know we were so excited to have this gallery opening with you. And thank you so much for doing this interview today. I'm sure everyone learned lots of wonderful <laughs> things about you that they didn't know. Well, I, I thank you for inviting me and I'll, uh, I hope everybody can come and see because my art is kind of different. It's not what the, the usual thing. It's made from discards and and junk, and I have a, a studio full of it. So. <laughs> uh, don't give your secrets away. So once again, that's Friday, June 10th at 5 o'clock. You can come to our gallery opening and meet Joanna Hurd. And we thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.